on this 21st day of April, 2023, for the auspicious occasion of the second annual James Black's Bowie Heritage Festival, we, the city of Washington, along with our festival partners, hereby express most cordial greetings to this celebratory event, long anticipated and fervently planned, is hosted collaboratively by two venerable institutions, the city of Washington, Arkansas, and historic Washington State Park. Many other groups and individuals have contributed resources to bring the event into reality. It is a pleasure to be here again with the second annual celebration of James Black. You know, coming from Forge and Fire, we always celebrate the renaissance of blade making from all different cultures and all over the world. But one of the things I love about it is we don't celebrate enough an American icon of American bladesmithing, who we crown the godfather of American bladesmithing. We really need to keep the traditions alive and celebrate that we have our own culture of bladesmithing in this country, of what built America. God bless America. Thank you. We're going to cut the ribbon and then we'll be ready to go. May I? Sure. Yeah.
saw several of the various 50 x-ray turns, and the lid is unmistakable with that enormous eye. I believe was around the same age. He was not terribly old when he died. Okay. Um, but as you can see from the time, you know, they were they're carrying a pistol in the right hand and their shirt sure defense on the left. So uh, James Black, uh, what did he do? He was 72 when he died. He lived a, a long time and he um, Unfortunately, his children were taken by um, their grandfather, his, his father-in-law, back to Texas. That's his mind. Yeah. Theoretically, uh, the what we're going to do is we're going to have a little version of our uh, little uh, portion fire chant, a quick fire, a quick test to make this competition. Uh, with me is Ricardo Villar. Good morning, good morning, guys. Thank you for coming. It was unfortunate. Ricardo is... Uh, one of the, well, let's start off with how I met Ricardo. Ricardo was actually a contestant on Fortune Fire. And 
uh, he actually, first time I met him, he was so quiet, so I was excited to find out he was Brazilian because I love, you know, Brazilian states and Bossa Nova fan. And he didn't say a word, he was so quiet. But he did create this uh, championship weapon that we got to test and he became a Fortune Fire champion. Then I was asked, you know, to go to the Fortune Fire version in Latin America. And we were filming there and he go, yeah, by the way, one of your fellow judges is a Fortune Fire champion. Uh, and it's Brazilian. I'm like, who? Oh, oh, Ricardo. You know, Ricardo, he doesn't speak. <laughs> <laughs> so apparently he's kind of a full scan of uh, the judges on Fortune Fire, which we're going to about. But then we formed a friendship, and because of Ricardo, he brought me down here because I got to meet the guardians of the James Knight legacy. Uh, Jerry Fisk, Lynn Ray, J.R. Cook, and Ricardo are teaching at the University of uh, Arkansas. Oh, yeah. But today, we get to do our version of Fortune Fire because the people who have taken the courses will get to compete and give you a taste of Fortune Fire. Okay, we have two sets here, and we're going to draw the names of some students and former students. So, could you please? All right. And here we go. And right there are the students waiting to see if they're going to be competing. So wave, they're, wave. they're kind of prepared, but yeah. not. <laughs> and a lot of their works are actually at the knife show. All right. We have Corey. Corey, hey. come on down. Where is he? There he is. <laughs> and All Corey right. will be running. And Corey goes up against. Tim! Tim, Tim, come on down! You're the next contestant on the Force and Fire version of the Quick Fire. We have Tim and Corey. Hey, Corey? Okay, come here, guys. I'm going to explain. <laughs> oh, they are. They are having so fun. All right. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. Come on, guys. Come on down. Come on, come on. Come on. I'm going to explain something to you guys. Okay. We are in a little park here, and we need to outside here and, and have fun. So that's why we have a picnic table here set up. So you're gonna forge a blade from this two little huts, and we need a bridge, and we need a knife to able and at least a blade we ain't gonna quench here we don't have time for that we're gonna be just a blade and then we have a set of 36 3 60 and 120 3 and we need a blade able to cut. they have to be careful now so folks here's the thing this is gonna be a quick fire they're gonna have to make a blade out of these small hooks that's a lot of work to be able to create the knife yes. out of that you have a short amount of time you have grinders, and then you have to be tested, right? Yeah. Now we gotta make this test kind of harder. Jane Nielsen isn't here to destroy stuff. So today, our special <laughs> test for you guys is to make a sandwich. Yeah. Okay? Because we are in a picnic. I'm starving. Are you? Are you? I am hungry. So y'all need to no, because a knife so I can see. it's so so common in our lives we never realized who have to use a knife today raise your hand nobody nobody eat in the morning so everybody has used a knife has been using a knife and we never realized so why the knife is not only for cutting or making yeah it's not for kill tests or anything else knives are tools that we use every day every day so as a blacksmith you just don't make knives for weapons or anything. You can make knives for everyday use. Exactly. So, this is your challenge. You're gonna have 45 minutes to do that, and that's easy. Okay. And the winner will receive a pair of boots like this. Run. Bring in one, so it's not. This is mine. It's not. They're gonna shoot in his boot. Okay, and also we have a pair of tongs and a t-shirt from Iron Jungle. So this is going to be the prize for today. And guys, good luck. The boards are running, and we need that. And the competition will start right now. Woo! Woo! So 
Now that we know what they're making the metal out of, what's the first process? Stink. <laughs> and did not shower today. <laughs> so one of the things when we're forging is the first step is we got to figure out what the ore is. What is the metal that we need? So these are the four horsemen of the James Black Harrison school. We got three India Blackers, we got Lynn Ray, Jerry Fish, J.R. Cook, and Ricardo Villar. To have India Blackers in one area, wow. I don't know if you uh, were able to see some of the work right there, but you know, when you watch movies, uh, I remember mean, the Highlander, right? That's the score, the sound that he had. It's been folded, is it a thousand or five thousand times? Right? A thousand times, right? And then, Jerry here, for Sophie, once I wanted his words that he did for History Channel, a blade that was folded and had a million layers. That's what the change that a thousand layers does. A million layers. And you know what? You know what a million layers looks like there? Just regular steel. Those layers are so tight to get into the layers. And then I was like so impressed with that. Then later on, he built another place that has 650 million layers. We can come up with that. So, to do so, I had to take my shoes off to count that time. That's a lot of people who look wonderful when you put the spoke. I mean, this is amazing. I mean, just calculating is always extrapolating every time you start folding. But wow, um, I haven't seen a blade like that. Have you ever get a chance? Why is it here? Why is it here? To say that you actually see this, go check Jerry's table out. For, for those of y'all who can watch the grinding, look at your feet. Even the placement of their feet is really critical to the grinder. You can see they're never square to the grinder. It's uh, too much of a strain and you cannot control it. Everything they do, the placement of their arms, the placement of their feet, everything is critical. You know, that's the mark of a good teacher, is that we just don't tell them how to do it. You show them, and you just tell them this is what's done, you show them how to do it. Because you can tire yourself out. You can actually, through pounding, develop some illness because you have bad posture and everything else. It's the same thing when you do martial arts, right? You have the upper body a posture. That's that do this, depending on how the way you move is very important. Whoa, it's looking like a knife. Wait, did you switch it out? That's the same blade. Hey guys, I'm hungry. Are you done? 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 We're healing time! Wow! We're... This is... Oh, okay. He's making a call to add. On the table for adding. Crazy. Tony, how long have you been doing this? 
How long have you been forging? About two and a half, three years. Two and a half, three years. Two? How long have I been forging? 30 minutes? 30 minutes? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little longer than that. <laughs> but then when you find out how long they've been doing them, you look at their works. It's amazing. And once again, don't judge them by what's being done here in 40 minutes. Judge them by what they do on their own time by watching what they have on their table. I'm, I'm impressed. Can't hear you. <laughs> They're doing good. They're on the final step. They're on the final step. Uh, I see that Tim is. Uh, Tim is uh, <laughs> it's karaoke time with Lynn Ray. <laughs> something there that's a, that's a interesting using the back of the belt to drop that edge while it's in motion it's so he's using the back of the belt the, the uh the act where there's no there's actually no abrasive so he's using that to drop it so that's pretty pretty slick we're coming right down to it we know that Tim is getting ready. He's testing the egg. He's checking it on his thumb. Corey's checking it on his thumb. So we okay. know it's going to be it's going to be right down to the wire. Lynn, that there's so much pressure in my shop working by myself. I fired myself twice. <laughs> well, I know that feeling, Harry. I know that feeling. And meanwhile, down here, uh, we're getting a breaking news over here from the uh, peanut gallery. What do you have to say? <laughs> Well, they're just about ready. <laughs> a little more roasting and, and we'll be ready. All right. What I love about what these guys are doing is just making anything with a sharp edge is not enough. It's got to look like a knife and they've got to impress us. Yeah. Look at them stropping on their hands right there, right there. They're really trying to get that last edge right there. Look at their hand if you get a chance. This is a fine grip that horse with. <laughs> I'm still waiting for the all air chopping. You know, when you go like this, they start air chopping. You know, you can cut the air with a sharp knife. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> got his legs on now. You can really tell when a knife maker right before he show all the hair off his arm, he looks like a dog with a mange. <laughs> 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 
One of the things I've always loved about the competition is that some bladesmiths actually help each other, how to figure out how to use the machines or if they need help moving something or holding something down. Because the true camaraderie is that we have a shared passion in knife making and they're just competing. The real competition is with yourself. So in the years, the eight years we've been in Fortune Fire, I am proud to say that we haven't really had any bladesmiths who really did a bad account of their attitude. They're always trying to help each other. A lot of places end up having hammerings and becoming lifetime friends. So that's what, this is the true thing about having a community of places. Ten minutes. Ten minutes. Two or three. And then they be nice to each other. Kill. K-E-A-L. Everyone alive. Yes. Okay, the mama So these guys are going to have to... You have a knife. Their knives are going to have to cut three different meetings. You've got that uh, summer sausage, you've got bread, oh, yeah, and you got a tomato. So each one of those things are going to, yeah. going to have a different texture. Here we go. Oh, wow. And it looks like... Yeah, it is very nice. Yeah, it's 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 very nice. <laughs> right, Corey starts off with tomato, right on the insides, cut into the plastic, nothing like making a sandwich right beside the guy you're competing with. Both of them looking pretty good. They look like they're professional shoes. Performance. Sandwich got speed over too. finesse. <laughs> it's, it's really, really, really well. I'm surprised. Thanks, <laughs> <Nice>, man. <laughs> oh, Tim is being fancy here. He's showing culinary skills. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Presentation is everything. Hey Tim, we need the summer sausage, Dad. You're gonna be disclassified. Yep, parameters. <laughs> yeah. on the show. I do this because I want to go. No. <laughs> what are we looking at? I, I tend to look at how straight it is. If there's, you know, how the handle and the blade have that form. The plunge grinds, are they even? Is one side thicker than the other? Look at the steel. <clears throat> we can see it's distal paper, guys. It means there is an angle coming down this way and this way, so it makes a nice value smile. So this is sharp, on this pistol thing, you see that it's thick in the middle, then it gets thinner down here, thicker, and it, so you have an uneven kind of, it doesn't taper. Taper means you start from one point and you slowly progress. Feel? We know they both hey can make sandwiches. <laughs> I'm back the other. <laughs> yes, that's why I'm bringing you out. <laughs> Just. Let's look at it. Go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The 
So, in terms of the sandwich and the way it's cut, yeah, it's clean. It's clean. I want to take a look at the bread. Now, bread, once again, is very telling. I saw one that had a sewing motion. They're pretty much equal in the way they came out. Presentation looks good. How are the food network? On the table. Hmm. What do you think, Doug? Well, I do see one blade in, uh, is preferable than the other overall. I know that they are both functional. So this is the nice part. When we go to the testing, the fortune fire, the blades can actually all perform equally. So then we go to the next piece, because they say looks are secondary to functions. So if they all function equally, then we look at the fine pieces of the blade. Now we're gonna compare. And when you put them side by side, it's even easier to see the difference. And it could be subjective. Some people like a different look. But for me, I'm looking at the craftsmanship in terms of the grinds. Yes, right? we can see that. One had more, more features than the other, more diesel paper. We can see a plate right here. And we can see through the handle. <laughs> yeah, very fine. We have three minutes. <laughs> All right. Now we're going to have a conference.
This is one old man you want to watch. He, he knows what he's doing. <laughs> one, two, three, go! Glenn has an unusual style and an unusual knife. You really, really need to check out this knife style if you have not seen it before. Come on, Lee, go! go. He's going to get there. it. He's going to get it. He's going in there. Yeah! Get yeah. with it like you stole it, Frank Boy. Oh, yeah, like that. Like that. He got it. Oh, he got it. Yep. And that's why he's a world champion, ladies and gentlemen. Time is. 22.08. There you go. One, two, three, go. Glenn has an unusual style and an unusual knife. You really, really need to check out this knife style if you have not seen it before. Come on, Lee. Go. Come on. 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 That's why he's a world champion, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, yeah. Time is 22.08. There you go. The T-bone. <laughs> Dawson liked the color of the orange chaps, so uh, he waited and he got it. What's interesting is that uh, with then competing, he's actually competing with some of the students who study from these gentlemen. Cool. No mercy. <laughs> Again, safety is everything. That's why we have the chaps. One, two, three, go. Go, keep on. You can do it. You can do it. Look at you. Look at you going like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get a grip on that handle. Go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Watch how they're cutting. You'll notice that some starts are cut with their forefingers, some starts are cut with the little fingers. It's an interesting when you're looking at your knife design. He's going to go, 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 go. Yeah, come on, T-Bone. You got it. Go, go, go. Go, go, go. So far, it's interesting to watch these cuts because they are doing what we call the silent cutting as compared to Jay Nielsen's grunting of everything that he does when he cuts on the show. <laughs> yeah, but then again, it is anger management therapy for Jay. It seems to help some of them. Yeah, you release that energy, right? So hold your breath. We know he's breathing. Yeah. Now, Corey, uh, if y'all noticed, Corey was in the... Uh, uh, that would be about time.
y'all notice he was pushing his truck as much as he was. Oh, he cut the There's, There's a cap. cap and, There's yes. a cap on the middle one. Is that all of So far the only one. All right. You got every one of them. You know that. I think you that also would follow. Yes. Very precise with the follow. So it's not just about cutting here. It's all the way you go. Martial arts, you kick. When you kick somebody, you want to kick the person behind him. So you have the power of follow through. Almost similar to what uh, they just did. It's about a 600 year old design. And in 600 years, Glenn Ray is the only one that was easy. I didn't know Glenn Ray was the only one that was able to actually improve a 600 year old design. When I first saw that knife, I thought that sucker done lost his mind. Look at that thing. But it is really comfortable. And as you can see, they cut really well. Y'all know he don't look right out of his head anyway sometimes, so this is going to, it's going to be good. I know, they think I can't count, but I just, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, I really enjoy it. You know, that, that design he calls an x-ray knife, that's about a 600-year-old design. And in 600 years, Glenn Ray is the only one. Woo! There you go. Glenn Ray was the only one that was able to actually improve a 600 year old design. When I first saw that knife, I thought, that sucker done lost his mind. Look at that thing. But it is really comfortable. And as you can see, they cut really well. All right, so we did, we did have a leader winner. And then for uh, the second place, uh, there was close behind them. We had to let the time on the two befores decide that. So uh, I will say our, our winner with a score of 48 points will be going to Lynn Ray. Close behind him by 45 points, Ben Seward, James Stephen. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to put it around you, but I'll hand it to you. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's go. Ladies yes. and gentlemen, I do hope that you have enjoyed the cutting competition. We will have the Arkansas State Finals here. Lynn, this will go with your already building record of... Uh, this is a little different than the other one you have. <laughs> All right, thank you, Lynn Ray. Ladies and gentlemen, please go back to the night show. We still have a little more time. Check these matches out because they've all given everything they can. You know, put it around you, but I'll hand it to you. <laughs> All right, let's go. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, I do hope that you have enjoyed the cutting competition. We will have the Arkansas State Finals here. Lynn, this will go with your already building record of uh, help focus. This is a little different than the other one you have. Yeah. All right, thank you, Lynn Ray. Ladies and gentlemen, please go by the night show with you. Because they've all given everything they can. You know, I'm, 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 I'm.